What up, Naughty Steppers? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel. And it is time for another Extra Naughty's monthly roundup. Gonna go over some EPs, albums, and compilations that I wasn't able to review in full, but which I still thought interesting enough to share my opinions on them with you. Shorter reviews because there is a lot to get through, so I'll just be identifying my main points with each one and maybe showing you something that you hadn't heard of before. Stuff released on on the 28th of April and after will not be reviewed in this video but the next one there's actually a fair few releases from the end of March in this video and the releases are covered in alphabetical order by way of artist name or record label name and are all linked in the description box down below lastly there'll be a small list of special mentions at the end of the video that I wasn't able to review here because then there would just be too many but yeah I definitely recommend checking those ones out as well and so so kicking off this latest instalment, we have the new EP from Bass Nectar, Reflective, Part 4. I find myself getting into Bass Nectar's style more with this EP, especially in comparison to Reflective Part 3, which I wasn't much of a fan of at all. It's just easy going with a fuzzy electric vibe to it, a couple of dark bits and some really good flows quite nice on the ear really. So yeah, I think I'm seeing a bit more now what people like about Bass Nectar. It's not insane, but it has a pretty infectious appeal. Some very decent collabs here as well, uh, particularly the Peekaboo one. So yeah, definitely up there with the best I've heard from him yet. This EP is a case of wild and wacky sounds with a decent amount of ambition ideas wise, but it really lacks in execution. The energy of it is good, some nice sounds and even moments on offer, a solid level of experimentation as well across the six tracks, definitely better than I thought it would be, but that really isn't saying much unfortunately, I haven't enjoyed Crank That Stuff uh, nearly basically at all over the last few years. And so to round up my thoughts on this EP, I'm not sure I would recommend it or even any of the tracks individually in all honesty. This album isn't one that you'll get hooked on ideas wise, but it's still a really good listen. I love the eerie, muffled, imperfect aesthetic going on here. Everything works towards making you feel a certain way. Definitely drags a little at points, and as I mentioned, not really an album to return to for specific tracks or even moments, but it's a very interesting auditory experience. Creepy, but also nostalgic nostalgia inducing, uh, really happy that stuff like this is around to be honest. I honestly find myself having very little to say about this EP, not sure what it brings to the table in any respect. The ideas aren't anything new, the production quality isn't there, from the dubstep itself to the percussion, the whole general execution of it. Just not sure what it's doing on Never Say Die to be honest. Uh, when I talk about the label taking on too much, this is exactly what I mean. Some classically high octane tunes here from Figure, but I think probably the best EP I've heard from him in a while. The sound quality seems better, the ideas cooler and more adventurous, all round just has way more going for it than usual. And a lot of it still has that vintage Figure feel, so yeah, I liked this EP a decent amount and will be returning to it multiple times this year. This EP is quite good, really Really enjoying the sound design for the most part, some great effects and noises on show, couple of impactful drops, but some of the other drops are quite flat, just kind of fall into the background with a bit of a whimper, uh, others are a bit messy. Also he uses the same laughing sample at the start of every track. I mean, what the hell is that about? Uh, honestly, don't know what's going on there. It's an enjoyable listen though, not much in the way of special ideas, but I do enjoy this approach and style generally. This is another Never Say Die EP that I'm just not sure on at all. Couple of interesting ideas, but a lot of it is just too much to take in. Some of it is very dark and grungy, other parts are screechy and thinned out, but mostly without much substance or inventiveness to it. There's a lot of randomness and contorted stuff here basically. As I said, a couple of attention grabbing ideas, but a lot of it offers very little. Just a pretty solid run of the mill Infect EP right here. Lots of extraterrestrial sounds and some plodding ridden backdrops. Basically, if you like his style, then you will enjoy this project. 
I can't really give a more accurate description of it than that. Gotta give the track Ice Cream a shout out for that intro, and also for its savagery alongside Death Sickle, which is very much welcomed within the context of the EP. This album is a very enjoyable listen, can honestly say there's something about all 11 tracks that I'm really, really getting into here. Whether it's particular sounds, ideas, the interaction between certain elements, the general vibe, it's colourful, playful, inventive, keeps the listener engaged and on their toes, with lots of unexpected turns and changes in mood and genre. Moments which are a bit empty, but you end up loving it as a massive breath of fresh air in this scene, big recommend to every single one of you. Also, I Am Bass, what an amazing title for a track. Another recommended album for everyone is the new EP from Monuman, the alias of D&B producer Emperor. Uh, really cuts deep this one. Very earthy and dark with little glimmers of hope, mostly down-tempo kind of music, in parts like a heavy version of the Drevum album that I talked about earlier. It's really finely put together, each track has a clear aim and does all that it can to reach that and purvey it as well as possible. Resultantly, the album feels quite complete and whole, potentially too long, but a real journey and a thoroughly worthwhile listen. This album definitely has a fair few proper solid moments, but reminds me more than anything of how hard it is to make a cohesive, ambitious LP. The rhythm leaning stuff works for the most part, some of it sounds samey but it's all full of force cleanly produced and hits in the right spots. The genre experimentation is alright, but I'm not sure he ever gets it quite right at any point, although fair enough for giving them all a go. It's something that I think he wants to keep doing, and I'd love to hear how he develops the other genres going forward, but it's where World of Wonk falls short for me. This is another pretty straightforward EP, but I must say more appealing than almost all other recent Black Label projects. There's an alive to the production here that I'm not sure we get usually on the imprint, pretty tightly produced and smacks you in the face in the exact right way. Basically, the majority of the drops don't drone on and feel laboured, the ideas are basic but the energy is spot on. So yeah, I'd have to say one of the more favourable Black Label EPs of recent times for me, so yeah, big ups to Nazar. From one Black Label EP to another, and I think more so than ever here, some Amplifier has got a good dynamic going on with his music. Not only in the interaction between sounds, but also sections. A lot of the sounds work together well, but also the transitioning is so on point. Moments again with him where the percussion could just be sharper, uh, which would take some of these drops to another level altogether. But this project has made me understand and appreciate his style a lot better. A lot to take in at points, but definitely seems cleaner than usual for him. This new Shadian EP is interesting, some really clever stuff in there that completely suits the futuristic, machine-driven vibe that he's going for. Pretty post-apocalyptic, dystopian feel to it. I appreciate the different moods and styles of glitchy production that he goes through across the four tracks, but I'd have to say Medination and Aberrate have the only drops that truly build on this theme, those in the other two tracks fall flat comparatively. Overall though, a decent project and one that I think will reveal more and more as I listen to it again and again, it's got quite the number of layers I think. Now this death step tear out mix is all the rage at the moment, but honestly I think Super Cool has done it better than most with this EP. Some lovely musicality in the introductions, and this style can go overboard easily, but some of these drops are really well constructed to be honest. Must say though that a few of the other drops are a bit full on at times, especially considering almost every track is over 4 minutes, it's a lot to take in. But it sells itself well, and is more rounded than others of its kind, for a lot of it the balance between all the different elements is reached. This is a really cheeky, well cut trap slash house EP from Von Glow, and one which I must say completely took me by surprise. I did didn't expect much at all, but I really like the style he's gone for here, and the way it's executed. Couple of meh moments, but really appreciating the general vibe. With enough moments across the three tracks to hang on to and remember, doesn't do too much. 
for what it is, definitely hits a certain mark. This is another solid set of songs, but part of me really wants Zeke Beats to take his sharp, detailed sound down much darker avenues. Because a lot of the time I find myself listening to all of these cheeky, quirky moments and not feeling the full force of his music. I just feel it could be more epic, intense, atmospheric. He does what he's trying to do here mostly very well, but I feel like it's a missed opportunity more than anything. An EP of Humanoid 2.0 leaning stuff would just be awesome. I don't want to dictate his musical direction at all, but I do think that would be sensational. Yeah, once again with 1788L, I just do not get the hype. The drops are very jarring. I honestly don't know how anyone can get into them. Some of them are just pure noise and mess. A lot of it is the perfect example of just using weird sounds for the sake of it. They don't actually fit into the music. Death Pact collab was hugely disappointing. Nothing particularly coherent about it. A lot of the stuff surrounding the drops is good. The Slews collab is my favourite just cause of the intro. But the focal points are the drops and they completely ruined the songs and his style subsequently, in my opinion. And so that brings the April 2019 edition of the Extra Naughties monthly roundup to a close. The special mentions are Avance, The Brig, Confession, Infinite, Interval Audio, Lost, Malar Remixes, Nonsense, Pinnacle, Sam Binger, and Wednesday. I'll put the links to all of those in the description box down below. But with regards to the EPs and albums reviewed in this video, which ones did you enjoy? Which others not so much? Are there any that I missed out? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this roundup video, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell along the way, social media accounts in the description down below. Next to my head, there should be another Extra Naughties roundup video if you're looking for some more dark electronic tunage to explore. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys. So be sure, as always, to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends, every single last one of you, in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>